Hello, my learning and technology friends. Frank here. I'm glad that you're here because this video is a fancy video. It's a fancy pro video. It has nothing to do with the environment and certainly has nothing to do with me. It has to do with this new fancy pro scanner, a webcam visualizer by Caesar, CZUR. If you've seen some of my other videos, you'll know that I really like a lot of the devices by CZUR. I've done reviews on the channel of their book scanners, their ET24, their Ultrashine Pro, their um, uh, Aurora scanner. So they make a number of really useful scanners that I can use to share documents and scan books. So I have a bunch of videos on that. But this one's a little bit different because this is the new Fancy Pro that not only allows me to scan and share documents, I can even scan a book with this, but it also allows me to use it as a webcam. So I get a lot more flexibility with this device. And I really like this device as a visualizer, which is really what it's intended to be. So it's a pretty, pretty neat device. I bet you can't wait to see it. Before we look at it though, we get a mat with it. You can order it with a mat and it uh, has two sides to it. So you get this sort of uh, brown leatherette type side to it. Normally, if I'm working with documents or if I want to share something, I'm going to put the black side up because that's going to give me good contrast and it works really well with the software. So let's say I have, um, let's say I'm doing some workshop stuff. So I've got some workshop tactics. I like you, I don't know if I've done some videos on the cards here. If not, I will. But I often use these cards uh, by Pipdex and I want to share these out and then I can put these on here and use the visualizer to share those out during a meeting, have discussions around them, help develop workshops and that sort of stuff. Obviously I could have a document such as a book. So maybe there's pages in a book that I want to share out and I'll demonstrate all of this uh, to you when we look at the device itself. So let's take a look. Let's take a look and open the box and see what's in here. First of all, it's pretty heavy comes in a little carrying case as well. Uh, it's in a cardboard box when you first get it, obviously. But when you open it up, you'll get some instructions in here. So you'll see that we have some instructions. We have a little foam piece in there. And then we have the actual Fancy Pro visualizer itself. And we'll just take this out here. And it's got a little bit of weight to it. So it's got a nice solid base to it. And then the other thing we get in here is a USB to USB-C adapter and we'll take a look at that as well so that you can attach it to your USB-C port. And this is the main setup here. So you can see here that I've got the Fancy Pro itself and look at this. It can come out and I can actually use it with this articulated arm as a webcam. So now I can use this as a webcam giving me a lot of flexibility of where I place the webcam. I could use it to scan an object so I can scan an object here with it and we're going to do this all in the demo and I can actually go and make it taller and I could put something underneath it. Let's take my book here again and now I could be in a meeting and I could be sharing out that book in the meeting and I could be talking and then I could say okay now it's time for me to use it as a webcam and now it's using it as a webcam. We have a lot of flexibility. Let's get it connected up to my computer and let's start showing some of the different features and a key here is going to be this dial at the top here with things like autofocus, continuous focus, zoom in, zoom out, lots of cool things we can do with the Caesar Fancy Pro. As you can see, I've set up the Fancy Pro as a webcam. So I'm able to use this as a webcam. I can make adjustments to the webcam up and down, forward and back and such. I can also use the visualizer software that allows me to go in and do things like change the resolution. I can change contrast. I can do things like change the exposure. Now on the top of the Fancy Pro on the head here, I do have exposure up down buttons. I have an inversion button so I can flip the image 180 degrees. We even have a light, so if I need to put a light, I have three levels of illumination that I can use. Generally speaking, if I'm using it as a webcam, I don't have the light on my face if I'm in a well-lit area, but this is especially helpful as a document camera. We also have the ability to adjust the focus from single focus to continuous focus, as well as spot focus. Let's put it back to the webcam position. So now here I am in the webcam position and you can see that by using this menu here, I can do things like right now I'm on continuous focus. I can go in and I can rotate the image. The rotation is actually quite interesting because it's not just 180, 90. 
You can actually go partial rotation, which I always think is kind of interesting with this. So I can actually bring this up to a partial rotation and you can have a lot of fun with that as well. Um, you know, depending on where you want it to be, so I can have partial rotation in there, I'll just reset that back to the, the head on. Sometimes when you first start up the Fancy Pro, there's just a little button on the back here, which is the 180. You'll actually find yourself upside down when you first plug it in. If you just press, and I'll bring this down so you can see it from the top. If you just press this 180 button, that'll actually flip the image so that you are in the correct orientation. Now that's, although that's really handy for a document, so you can place it on, on the surface here and if it's upside, you can flip it so that you can see it properly and share out exactly what you're reading. We have a lot of things. Brightness, I've got a little bit bright right now so I could uh, bring down the brightness here. I could also, one of the things is contrast. I usually do like to bring the contrast down a little bit. I've been playing around with it. For me, at any rate, I like it at about 30. And now you also have the beauty filter on here. In my case, I don't really need the beauty filter, you know, born with it. But the idea here is that you can go in there and you can adjust the beauty filter to create a little bit of a, a nice soft filter on there. And there's even some other types of filters on here. So for example, you can go grayscale, create that, that black and white look or monochrome look. Uh, black and white is true black and white, like it's completely black and white. And then there's some other different types of filters you can put in here as well, like a, the negative filter and you can go in and you can put in a, um, this actually is very hard to see on the screen here, but I'll go back to the original. It looks better depending on the screen you have. Now, I can even put watermarking on here, which is kind of handy. So those are all the different options that I have directly from that menu there. The other thing that I can do is on the side here, and this is especially helpful with documents. So let's bring up a document. So let's say I was mentioning earlier, let's say I wanted to do some, uh, some work with uh, workshop cards. So these are just some pip deck cards that I like to use when I'm doing workshops. Uh, if you're interested, I'll link down below. I'm going to do a video on those as well. But with the pip decks here, um, if I want to share out these cards, what I can do is just bring this into document mode and I can adjust the height so I can choose how, how tall or in, um, you know, how close to the object I want to be. Now in my case, I'm, I'm pretty high off the object and what I may wish to do is I could use the light to illuminate a little bit more. I could, if I wanted to adjust this down, so physically move it down, you can also zoom in and out on it, but you'll also notice it's upside down. So I'm just going to press that 180 button here and you'll notice that I have the ability to go in and start showing off the cards and such. Now I can get very close to this as well. So if I bring the arm down, I can bring this right down to a macro level. So if I want to go right into a macro level here, and then I can actually point things out, talk to my team, use this as a document camera and send that out on a meeting. Again, if I want to come it back up, I just come back up and I can even adjust it. So I go really high up. That's very useful when I have something like a book. So if I bring a book into the picture, you can see that the book is here. Now at the top here, you'll notice I have the display. So right now I'm using this as a visualizer, as a display. So I might be sharing this out in remote teaching or projecting it up to a board in the classroom or in a presentation. I can also go to scan. So if I go to the scan mode here, it will actually go through and I'll scan some cards. Maybe I, I was, I can, well, I'll scan a page, a couple pages of the book. So if I lay the book down here, it'll all automatically detect the borders of the object that I have. So if I go into my scan mode, I'll just go display. I'll go back to scan. You'll notice that it'll go to scan. It'll detect the edges of the book that I have here. It takes a few seconds and then I can just come in here and I can scan it. Now, if I am presenting this and once I've scanned it, it will go into my file list. So I'll just got it here and I'll make sure I get the scan. Yeah, there we go. So you can see I'll have a file list of all of the different scans that I've done here. So you can see all the different scans that I've done uh, over the past little bit here while I was playing around with it. And if I go back to display, a really useful feature here is let's say for example, and I'll, I'll just grab a more interesting page. So here's a page here that has a, you know, a, a graphic on it, really kind of hard to see, right? Not, not with the, uh, not with Fancy Pro. I can come down and I can, I can put that right where I want it. So you can see here, it'll automatically focus in on there. I can set that up again to continuous focus. If I want to, what I could do here is hit the spot focus. So I can hit the spot focus. It'll grab a focus on there. 
and you can see that I've got this graph that I might want to share out, but maybe I want to make some annotations on here. No problem. We have this entire annotations section here that allows me to do things like add text. I can go in, I'll just use a pen and I can choose the thickness of the pen. I can choose the color of the pen and I could do things like then use that pen to draw. I'm drawing with my mouse so it's a little bit different, but you can see I can draw attention to something. Um, I can go in and I could put a box around something. So if I choose the box option here, I can draw a box around something. Just grab my mouse here. And um, you can see I can put a box around something here as well. You can do fills for the box. You can do shading for the box. All sorts of cool things you can do. And if I, you know, obviously if I hold the book open, it's going to be there. I can also let go of the book and I can have a conversation about what I'm showing on the screen to my audience. So you can see that, and this is just some of the features and functions that we have when it comes to the Fancy Pro. There's more that I can do with it, but this is a good overview. You can see I can go in and I can do things like ch change it from video mode to uh, photo mode. So if I want to take a photo of it as well, you can make changes there as well. Um, with, if I'm done with these annotations, by the way, I can just go in and I can erase the annotations by clicking on them. So I'll use the eraser here and I'll click on any annotations. If you change your resolution, that'll also happen. I'll go back to mouse mode. So I'm now using my mouse and you can see that there's a lot of annotations that I can make as well. I think that for myself, I'm probably going to be using this predominantly as a document sharing device. So I might use, for example, a camera that I have built into my laptop as my webcam or use something like uh, my, my iPhone as a webcam or this as a webcam, because you can certainly use it as a webcam. I mean, there we go. Here I am upside down, so I'll just press the 180 button. So you can see I can use it absolutely as a webcam and switch between the two quite easily. Or I could use it as an additional webcam for a bit of a studio environment where I have documents and I have webcams. So it's a really versatile little tool that I'm going to get some use out of. I can't wait to use it more in the classroom as I'm doing both remote and in-person teaching as a, as a tool that I can use to bring the information closer to my audience.